Hey everybody, Dave here, Hidden Off Grid. Welcome back to another video. In this video, I want to talk about invincibility. I had to say that word quite a few times before I took this cut. Um, invincibility. Um, it's an interesting thing to think about because I think everybody is probably going to relate to what I say in this video. And it's something that's been on my mind a lot over the last several months, and I'll kind of talk about why. So invincibility, when you're young, you're invincible, right? I mean, <laughs> you're, not invinci you're not invisible, but you're invincible, okay? And what do I mean by that? I mean, when you're young, you don't feel like anything can touch you at all. I'm pretty sure that most people felt like that. I don't know if girls feel like that, little girls feel like that, but it'd be interesting to get some you know, um, responses back from some ladies and say, hey, yeah, when I was growing up, I felt like I could be uh, untouchable. So, uh, as you grow up, uh, when you're in your teens and stuff, you still feel the same way. And then when you get to a young adult and in your 20s and stuff, um, you still feel pretty invincible. And let me just give you some examples from uh, my life. So, I was probably like 15, 16, 17 years old or so. The neighbor across the street is uh, painting his jet ski. And I don't know if you're familiar with uh, two, you know, but it's you know basically hardener. It's paint. It's hardener in there. It's clear coat and all that stuff. It's not from a rattle can. Not that the rattle can's any better for you, but in in general, uh, you're supposed to be wearing a mask, right? Because <laughs> cyanide is a byproduct of the paint process. And I remember him you know, just cracking the garage door and he's over there painting and I came in when he's painting and the whole freaking garage is uh, just fogged up, you know, and he's like, you shouldn't be in here without a mask, you know, and it's like, he's other cyanide, there's a bunch of other stuff and I'm like, I don't know, it smells good to me, you know, so I'm just, I stayed in there for, you know, a little while, whatever, but um, you don't think about stuff like that when you're young and uh, when I got a little bit older, five years older or so like that, I even painted my own car in my garage and I never wore a mask. And I even painted, uh, probably it was my 30s, painted the back bumper of my Porsche and, uh, you know, didn't wear a mask. Uh, painted the roof of my Corvette that flew off going 45, uh, 40 miles an hour or so, flipped up in the air and then crashed to the ground and cracked it. So I had to repair it. <laughs> But uh, when I was repairing it, um, I made a makeshift paint booth in my garage and painted it without a mask. And this stuff, you know, I can remember after I got done painting, you know, your nose is stuffed up with a bunch of clogged, you know, I don't know, mucus, boogers, whatever you want to call it, boogers. And, you know, I'm like, well, stuff could be, you know, bad for you. It should be going to your lungs, you know, and that's the reason why you have hair in your nose to collect all that debris and junk. Well, um, I was just stupid. It was stupid to do all that stuff. And my very first job out of high school, real job out of high school, I worked on alarm systems for ADT securities, uh, ADT security systems. And I used to go in attics maybe half the time without a mask, especially if it was something quick I needed to do up there and I wasn't gonna be up there for an hour, I would not wear a mask. And I used to always come out of a, um, out of an attic, you know, blowing my nose and having this dirty, mucky stuff come out because of, you know, if it wasn't a fiberglass insulation, you know, it was normally the good insulation, which was the brown stuff, but it was very dirty, and the white stuff, which was just fluffed up, most, in most cases, it was just fluffed up fiberglass. Well, that's got glass in it. You know, and then I'd say about half the time I wore a mask. And because I hated wearing a mask, it was hard to breathe when you're up in a hundred and, you know, 20, 130 degree attic to wear a mask in that heat is very tough. So, and I just wanted to get the hell out of there. So, um, just looking back, that was stupid. Very stupid to do stuff like that. So, and I look about, I look back on it now and I think about all the things I could have. You know, it could have been asbestos up there. I used to crawl underneath uh, houses as well. Didn't really have to wear a mask under there, although there was some times where I had to go under ducting and all that. And when I was going through the ducting, uh, you'd rub against the ducting and it would kind of rip the whatever's covering the ducting, like insulation. 
it could be it could have been um, asbestos because you know I've looked at asbestos and that's kind of what it looks like you know what about drilling through the ceilings and stuff in the house to put up motion centers and all that a lot of that popcorn ceiling had asbestos in it you know never wore a mask for that so uh, I think about, you know, all the fire journey, the, you know, uh, financial independence, retire early journey that I'm on. And the biggest thing with financial independence, retire early, the fire movement in general is your health. If you don't have your health, you can't really fire at all. Um, that's a big part of fire. If you are unhealthy, you're pretty much going to probably have to work in general for uh, most of your life because you need to have make sure you have good health care and you can cover all those expenses for whatever health condition you have so I just hope that I don't have some sort of lung condition or lung cancer down the road because of all of the things that I did um, stupid things that I did growing up now granted probably most kids do stupid stuff like that the body is forgiving but is it really gonna be forgiving enough for the stuff that I did I look back on my grandpa my grandpa was a mechanic most of his life and uh, you know a diesel mechanic for uh, I don't know 30 years plus and he used to spray you know brake cleaner and all that stuff and back in the day brakes and also clutch material clutch disc material had asbestos in it, asbestos in it. and I, I know most people when they're spraying brakes uh you know cleaning the brakes and all that stuff and cleaning off um clutch material and all that stuff you're not wearing a mask for that stuff usually so there's 30 years of him probably breathing in asbestos 30 years of breathing in the r134 which is bad for the environment uh, which was the accelerant in most of the you know spray cans uh, until probably the 90s or so maybe the late 80s probably the 90s a lot of the r134 stuff went away free on right um, so, you know, he was fine. Now he had some health issues later on in his life, but it wasn't lung issues or anything like that. So I really think about it every day that I wake up, um, it does cross my mind every so often, you know, I'm like, okay, I really need to think about all the things that I could do to my body. You know, I used to, uh, I remember, you know, people driving or grandpa driving through, um, you know, diesel smoke and stuff. I like, oh, roll the window down. That smells good. You know? and diesel smoke still smells good to me but um all that stuff we did and we never think about all the repercussions that we could have down the road from all those things you know so every day i do think about it what am i doing to my body now what chemicals do i spray in my bathroom that could i could be breathing in so i really think about that stuff now and i really either spray it and leave, turn the fan on and leave or I get the hell out of there and limit the products or even try to buy some organic type of products to clean with. So I think about all that stuff now. I think about smoke because a lot of people um, smoke outdoors and they don't really think about the repercussions of people downstream from those people smoking and I cannot deal with people smoking near me at all. It really just makes me ill. Um, not from a stance that it's gross what they're doing, but it just the smoke in general makes me ill uh, It just it bothers me. It'll probably give me the backdoor trots or something. Everything gives me the backdoor trots. So whatever uh, So I think about all that stuff now, you know Bleach, you know put the bleach in the turn the you know fan on open the window Leave the room until the bleach smells gone or at least has died down uh, Because we shouldn't really be around that type of stuff, you know, so those are the things I think about and that brings me to the vaccination, you know, and I, you know, all power to you if you got the vaccination, you know, that that's your prerogative, but I really hate what they're doing in this country. They're pinning the vaccinated against the unvaccinated and I really seriously do not like that at all. And I think it's, it's a shame, honestly, but because uh, it's my right and I don't feel like I should be forced to get the vaccination because I have no idea what that's going to do to my body down the road. If I was older and I was more at risk, 
of you know dying from this pandemic or something like that then i would be more you know open to getting it but at my age my risk group i don't feel like it's a big risk uh, factor for me and to me the risks outweigh the benefits so i really think about everything that i do now when I was in the military and joined the military, I had to get every vaccinated, uh, vaccination under the sun. Typhoid, yellow foid, yellow foid, yellow fever. Um, let me see, I got penicillin, which is not a vaccination. I got smallpox vaccination, hep A, hep B, typhoid, not typhoid, uh, TB. Um, luckily, I didn't have to get anthrax, but so I had to get everything, you know, and I got, I remember getting, um, I got, let me see, Hep A and Hep B. I got all three series of shots. Got put on the search and rescue team where I was supposed to go, you know, search, you know, we we're searching through cow parts and stuff as a test. But if a plane went down, you have to go into a field and search for body parts, teeth and brain matter or whatever. And luckily I never had to deal with that. Got off the team and left the, the Air Force, but before, you know, anybody, any plane crashed, uh, but, the story, the long story short here is I got, you know, hep A and hep B um, vaccinations. Well, come to find out, I was not immune to either one of those, okay? Hep A or hep B. When I got out of the military and went to go work for Kaiser Permanente's data center, they tested me for all that stuff and said, you are not immune to hep A and hep B. Do not get any more of these shots. But... Can you imagine if I was out in the field and you know picking up this stuff and you know getting Hep A, Hep B from it or whatever, and I'm not vaccinated or I'm vaccinated against it, and they think I'm immune to it, but I'm not. I've never really had the flu in my life. Maybe once or twice. I'm not really susceptible to it. So why do I need to get the vaccination every year? I just look at that stuff every single year. I don't know what's right for you. What's right for me is whatever I want to decide to do without somebody trying to force me to do it. Now, when I was younger, I obviously had all the vaccinations uh, because I had no choice. I was a baby, right? But you never know. We have un unexplained illnesses to this day that we really can't explain that popped up in the 70s, 80s, and 90s and, and going forward. A lot of it could have had to do with the changes to Ansel Keys, um, you know, the, the doctored results that he did in the study for cholesterol and meat and fat and all that stuff, which was all bogus, but that changed industry and hopefully uh, going forward, the industry has been changing, but in general, you get where I'm going with that, right? There are some unexplained illnesses, ADHD, um, you know, you got some uh, autism spectrum stuff out there. I fall on the spectrum, although uh, a lot of people don't even realize it, don't even know it, and because I'm very good at hiding it, but I see it every day in myself. So anyways, I hope that you got some out of this video. Let me know if you can relate to anything I said in this video. I really appreciate everybody tuning in, and there will be some more videos coming in the future, of course more AT videos coming as uh, this particular year winds down. So look for more AT videos in November, December, all the way through uh, when I start the AT in May, June of 2022. So anyways, thanks a lot for tuning in. We'll see you next video. Thanks for watching.